sale in Washington State today, making it the second state behind Colorado to begin selling legal weed. We're joined by Derek Peterson. He's the CEO of TerraTech. Now, they're one of the leading makers of marijuana growing equipment. Derek, welcome back to the show. Hey, Stuart. Hey, everyone. Thanks what's for having this, me back on. What's this I hear about a shortage of weed? Like in Seattle, there's only one recreational pot dispensary, and they've only got 10 pounds of weed to sell on opening day. Explain it. Why is this happening? You know, it, it's a similar situation that they ran into in Colorado. Remember when Colorado had somewhat of a mature medical market as soon as they passed recreational? Um, the problem was they didn't have enough supply to meet the potential demand. And if you look at the numbers right now, whether it's Colorado or whether it's Washington, about 2 to 2.5% two of the population seems to be medical marijuana ba patient based. But who knows what it is from a recreational standpoint? If you look at the alcohol numbers, you're looking at over 65% of adults that utilize alcohol, so we're still trying to wrap our arms around how big this recreational market could be. So it's it's really hard for these businesses to prepare for the for the potential demand, but they'll grow into it. No no pun intended. But <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you make growing equipment. Okay, we got that. But I mean, obviously, you're talking up your own book because what you're saying is that demand may be a great deal higher for legal weed than we had supposed. Are you saying that? Yeah, I think, I think we see that. I mean, this is a little bit different than most markets. This isn't an, people constantly say this is an emerging market. The reality is this is a developed market that's existed for decades. The difference is it's just existed in a black market, and today it's actually in a more overt market, or it's moving into more of a transparent market. So I think there's a significant amount of demand from a recreational standpoint. I think we're starting to see the throes of that in Colorado. They've, they've collected over 20 million in taxes this year. The governor himself said that they think he's going to do uh, over a, close to a billion dollars this year in sales, 600 million of that coming from recreational alone. Well, why doesn't the price come down? Uh, and I'm told that it's well, $400 an ounce or something like that. I think that was in the New York Times just the other day. Yeah. 400 bucks per ounce for the weed that will go on sale today in Washington State. It occurs to me that when you guys get fired up and you're really producing a lot more, surely that price will come down, won't it? Well, we've seen some, some price contraction. Let's take California, for example, which is a lot more mature of a market with a very, very liberal medical program. Um, we've seen prices contract a little bit over the last handful of years, but they've really stabilized around this point. And I've heard that for you know the last four or five years that prices are going to come down. They have in pockets, but they've also risen. When Colorado had the recreational shortage, you saw prices going upwards of seven to $9,000 a pound in, in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Now, you make growing equipment, and you sell the, the, the stuff, that, the, the equipment to grow uh, cannabis uh, the weed. Now, are you, uh, which states are you looking to next to legalize recreational marijuana? Because I presume that you're focusing some marketing efforts on the next states likely to take that step. Yeah, we actually just received a um, special use permit to actually cultivate in Clark County, Nevada. Um, we think that the recreational program will take off there probably within a couple of years. My hope is actually, and this is kind of against you know what most people would think, my hope is actually they allow the, the medical program there to mature for a little while before they jump right into recreational so that the, so that the, the industry has a chance to you know, get a foothold, build its infrastructure and that type of thing before they, before they start running. They've got to learn to walk. But Nevada is a great program. It's well, a great example. It's for profit. If, if I were to, if, it's, if a, a, a marijuana producer was to use your equipment in all the best possible way, how many pounds or ounces of weed could one plant produce in one growing season, however long that is? That's a good question. So uh, that really depends on how big you grow the plant. Some people will grow small plants. Some people will grow giant trees. What people equate to for indoor cultivation is how many pounds per light are you getting. So a good grower will shoot for about a pound to a pound and a half of production per light unit on the inside of a cultivation. Facility. Is that per year? Uh, per cycle. So you're talking probably about 10 weeks per cycle plus cleaning, harvesting, et cetera, and so forth. So you can get multiple cycles per year. So if all goes well, that's a highly productive and highly profitable operation, assuming you're legal. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. I mean, the taxes are, are significant. Most municipalities are putting significant tax bases on there. But yeah, for right now, the margins across the country in the different pockets, especially the recreational states, the margins are very attractive. Fascinating stuff. Derek Peterson, thanks for joining us. Uh, keep on coming back because uh, this is either a developed market or a developing market. And we want to hear about it. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Stuart. Okay. Check out this guy, please. Falling asleep at a Yankee game.